Hello and welcome along to this hour of ClueCon Deconstructed. We're back in the room with more great speakers. In fact, it's going to be a bit of a Kama Ilio hour this time because we've got two great speakers. We've got Fred Posner a little bit later on. And uh, in just a few moments, we'll be having Daniel, uh, Daniel Constantin Mirla with us. So we're looking forward to that. And um, we need to remind you that if you're in the broadcast lounge, not broadcast lounge, broadcast cafe, you can be watching the presentations in there and conversing with previous speakers as well. And by the way, if you're watching live on YouTube, welcome along. But if you jump into the broadcast cafe, you can be a winner because Abby gives things away periodically and you need to be in you need to be in one of our rooms at some stage or another in order to be a winner but i gather you've got some announcements for us right now happy happy so i'll hand to you yes i don't have anything to give away until after our speakers are done but i do have a few announcements uh first of all tonight is the gigabit reception which is going to be our virtual version of a networking event that starts at 4 30 central time until 6 30 central time and you are all invited all you have to do is go to our ClueCon deconstructed lobby the links are in the emails we've been sending out on our slack channel at signalwire.community and on our social media channels as well which if you aren't following, you should go and give us a follow. That's where we're going to be giving all the information about the rest of the day today. And you can get a, uh, the first look at what ClueCon is going to look like next year and get the information as we get it as well. Uh, that's also where we post all things free switch. Uh, so make sure to go and give us a follow if you want to stay up to date with us and the team. And uh, that's really the only announcements I have for today, except if you're not a winner of these uh, awesome raffles and you still want some of this swag, we do have a swag store open until August 13th. Uh, the link to that is also on the Slack channel and social media. So if you're interested in some of the swag we've been showing off, you can go to our swag store and get some for yourself. We've got hoodies, t-shirts, stickers, we've got some games. So there's a lot of fun stuff. So check it out. Thank you very much, Abby. We always appreciate your messages of joy and excitement. And when you show up to give away stuff, people like that too. And we'll see you a little bit later after our couple of speakers now. So we'll say bye-bye, Abby, and introduce the first of our speakers. It's Daniel Constantin Miela. Hello, Daniel. How's it going with you? Hey, David. Uh, good here. Uh, ready for uh, another uh, session to this um great uh, event online event so far and, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Indeed, you're, you're a, a man of many sessions you did the workshop yesterday didn't you daniel the um the uh, Kama elio workshop um but i gather you're gonna go into a little bit more detail um in certain areas now as you go give us your presentation but before we bring your slides up or anything like that whereabouts are you joining us from today i'm joining from uh, berlin germany so uh getting uh, a little bit in the evening here but still uh, light outside so uh, it's uh, yeah, well, it's good to have you joining us from there uh, and i we were just chatting uh, in the room beforehand and you've got it pretty hot over there at the moment don't you yeah it's coming uh, a couple of uh, days with over 30 degrees celsius to be sure everyone is aware of that and that's quite untypical for Berlin. Uh, it gets over the summer, but uh, not usual. So, yeah, uh, very nice and warm. And I, I, uh, I remember all the times that I've come over for a Kama Ilio world over there when it's been pr pretty warm, generally speaking. Um, yeah. Anyway, I suppose we should get on and get a presentation from you, Daniel. That's why everybody's here, to hear what you've got to say. So we'll pop your slides up on the screen. And there they are. And uh, Daniel, over to you. Thanks, uh, uh, David. OK, so uh, let's uh, start with the slides here. And then uh, we continue in the cafe lounge for the cafe room for the questions. Um, as David mentioned already, I had another session um, uh, two days ago, if I'm not uh, wrong, uh, getting started with uh, Camaelio, a quick tutorial about that, giving the resources of um, where to look for um, finding Camaelio documentation, installation guides, uh, downloads, and uh, so on. What are the important aspects of uh, 
to be aware when starting with Kamailo and its scripting configuration file and so on. You find the recording already, it's published on the uh, YouTube channel and uh, also the slides are available on kamailo.org events directory. Today, I'm gonna focus uh, a little bit more on um, what to watch when uh, you run a Kamailo instance, uh, mainly from uh, like a local admin uh, uh, perspective uh, with um, uh, uh, the tools we uh, have available around uh, the project. So uh, just to also introduce myself, if you haven't uh, uh, participated in the previous session, my full name is Daniel Konstantin Niebla. I'm originally from uh, uh, Romania, but living in Berlin, Germany for quite a lot of time, where I was involved in this uh, project from pretty much beginning early uh, 2000 and uh, continuing uh, with the project uh, these days. For a more detailed uh, history of the project, please uh, uh, see the recording of my previous session. Now, uh, uh, as we uh, all know, in uh, uh, production, uh, it's very important to keep an eye on what's happening around with your applications, with your uh, systems, hardware, software, and that uh, um, applies also to uh, Kamailio. Kamailio, it's a um, uh, demo application, so practically it doesn't have any graphical user interface that uh, you interact with the application. You will have to do it from um, a command line. Um, there are some web interfaces, uh, also open source project uh, that could be used for such purpose, but they are independent of um, Kamailio. For the sake of this presentation, I'm going to show um, examples with um, a tool uh, named KMCLI, Kamailo Command Line Interface. Uh, people that are with the project for a long time are familiar with KMCTL. Uh, this new tool, KMCLI, new started a few years ago, actually tries to become an alternative and eventually replace KMCTL over the time. Uh, KMCTL, it's from the beginning of the project. It's a shell script that you can interact with Kamailio runtime environment as well as with um, its uh, database, with the backend used by Kamailio. However, shell has, scripting language has its own limitation, and uh, KMCLI is written in um, Python, allowing the better input validation. Uh, more flexibility in um, presenting the output, especially for the JSON RPC um, uh, results. And you'll see my example uh, will be compacted form YAML format. And uh, it's quite modular, so extend it for your own needs, like managing your own table used by Kamailio via SQL Ops, for example. You can just add a Python file in a folder and a subcommand appears in the help of the, this tool, and uh, you are ready to, to go and keep that uh, script private for you because it's specific for your needs, so you don't need any patch to the core of the application. And uh, as more details, it's Python 3 uh, relying on the click framework for who is familiar with uh, these two technologies or want to read more about. Uh, here it's practically the output for the help command. You can see some example here, how to look for the um, uh, configuration file, what are the common options uh, for running the tool and then a lot of uh, sub comments from uh, this uh, perspective practically you can manage modules such as load balancer dispatcher as we name it in company or the active call tracking dialogue accounting subscriber adding removing updating password for subscribers so quite a lot of interaction with the server and you'll see many of these um, uh, will be in the examples i have uh, next so now uh, to the topic of uh, the presentation, uh, I'm, uh, uh, I was 
trying to, to look what I do when I start a new deployment and then I uh, offer uh, support services for um, running uh, Kamaila instances uh, from the perspective of the initial uh, installation or from the perspective of uh, upgrading Kamaila from one version to another, sometimes running Kamaila many times on the same system or having a couple of versions, typically two, the current one and the next one, and I'm updating to the next one, but I'm still willing to keep the old one around for a while, just in case I have to rever revert uh, quickly back. So, of course, uh, you install Kamaimio, and uh, again, you have some guidelines in my previous session from two days ago, getting started going. But then you start it, and you have to actually check is it running or uh, uh, not, because uh, could be different uh, um, issues that can prevent Kamaimio starting. A common that you can easily uh, run is ChemCLI uptime and it will show you details when Kamaelio was uh, started, so up signs, and then the current time and uh, the difference in uh, seconds. So it gives you an indication. If you have a, a restart at that moment, it should be just a few seconds, five, 10, depending how fast uh, you are. If this command fails, uh, what could be uh, the problems? Maybe you had some typo, of course, in the commands, and you will have, or in the configuration file, so you will have to check the uh, syslog messages. Uh, don't forget always this Kamaelio minus C. I have it in my previous tutorial as well. It will do a syntax checking over the configuration file. So if you mistype it, a parameter name or a function name, or you forgot to put a semicolon, uh, it will show you. And then, of course, you can increase the debug level if it's harder to uh, spot what's the, the problem with uh, starting the um, uh, Kamaelio. And you can figure it out uh, either from logs or well, you can turn Kamaelio into printing uh, log messages to the terminal for a short uh, time and uh, you'll uh, watch the logs on screen. Uh, when it's running, sometimes during the upgrades, uh, maybe you forgot some symbolic link or you forgot to update paths in the NED or uh, system D file. So the way to check what version it's running, because sometimes, again, might not be in path if you install from sources and if you keep a couple of versions in different folders. So you can, during the compilation time and installation, you can tell deploy Kamaelio in that specific folder. And with another version, you can deploy it into another uh, folder. And then you can start one or another as, as you wish. So the command for it would be chemCLI SRV version, which gives you uh, quick information what's running there. And we have uh, Kamaelio 5.5.0 uh, development, which is the current master. So typically in production, you have to run a stable range like 5.4 or 5.3 as they are maintained these days. The ID and JSON RPC attributes as listed here and in other um, uh, examples are practically coming from the JSON RPC uh, protocol. Uh, and the result is what Kamaino gives as um, output for the command. So as I hit this couple of times and you know, uh, Upgrading, it's typically happen, happening at uh, midnight where it's low traffic. Uh, engineers are rather uh, uh, tired, no matter how much coffee or cola or pizza they had. Uh, uh, be sure you did these updates to the packs if you did it, or if you, if you install from uh, packages, uh, the installation happened properly. And uh, then if you run a couple of Kamaelio instances, maybe one is still um, running an old version because you want to keep it like that. It can happen like you have an edge proxy and then a main proxy on the same system but a different port, maybe uh, running on loopback uh, for security reasons. Uh, be sure that in such case you configure the control tools like ChemCLI here or ChemCTL, the old one, to use the proper um, control socket to interact with Kamaelio. 
Otherwise, uh, you might be surprised and uh, get in panic uh, that, oh, what happened? I haven't started the right one and the database, it's not uh, configured as expected for the specific version. Kamaelio being a multi-process applications, it starts a lot of processes. If you look at the process table uh, uh, with PS or top HTOP uh, tools, uh, you don't have much information, but KMCL, IKMCTL as well will give uh, you the PS command. And when you run it, you get a list with some more details. So you have the process ID and then some description along with the internal index. And can happen that um, some of the workers that you know you sh uh, should have there are missing. Uh, could be a different reason. Maybe the module you wanted to uh, load is somehow uh, not enabled, maybe in a comment, maybe in a define uh, that it's not enabled. Or maybe the parameters are not properly set in the way that if you set it, the same parameters a couple of times. The last one is uh, the, the one in um, used by Camaelio. So maybe you copy it a couple of times or uh, could be a global parameters or could be a module parameter. Uh, check if it's set uh, more than one um, time. Of course, um, maybe some processes crashes for whatsoever reason. So might be some Camaelio zombie processes that you can check with the system tools, PS, top, H top. Or maybe after you uh, change the configuration file and you did the restart, uh, it didn't happen. Maybe the PID file was no longer there or uh, somehow it was another failure in killing the process. Uh, using the wrong uh, user or forgetting to use sudo, things like that. Um, another common issue I noticed, especially when migrating um, servers to new uh, uh, networks to different location, it's about listening sockets. As we know, with Kamaino, at startup, it creates a list of addresses and ports it's listening on and they cannot be changed at runtime. So we require restarting. But when you migrate the server, you may end up in a new system. And then uh, if you look at the uh, sockets, it's not what you expected. Uh, I had actually one of the bad experiences I had in the past. It was a Debian upgrade, if I'm not wrong, when they changed the name of the network interface used to be like HTH01, so Ethernet 012, and they change it to EN and some other uh, format. And with Kamaelio, you can say, listen on that interface by name. And as we migrated, or we did upgrade of the, the system, and then we started Kamaelio was only listening on like the loopback because it had the listen on uh, uh, loopback interface for local monitoring and traffic was not coming, that because uh, Debian changed the naming policy. Of course, you can turn it back, but uh, it was something unexpected and I had a little bit of uh, downtime uh, at that uh, moment until we uh, figure out uh, what happened. So with this command, you can uh, uh, see and uh, then uh, what would be the, the solutions here, of course, look inside the Kamaino CMG and check the network interfaces. Uh, if you work with IPv6, be aware that we don't uh, listen automatically on IPv6 as we listen on IPv4 for the all the interfaces. When you don't specify explicitly what interfaces to listen on, and then uh, if it is some high availability environment with active standby shared IP, uh, check if um, the shared IP was uh, shifting properly because maybe you expect to be now in the active node or standby node and it's the opposite as uh, you may uh, expect. A quite common problem uh, that uh, happens with Kamaino, it's um, uh, due to the preprocessor directives. These are a sort of condition that are evaluated at startup. 
we enable disable parts of the configuration files. So practically allows to have in the config file the rules for not traversal, but disable at the beginning because maybe you will have to install RTP into RTP proxy. And you can turn it on by defining with NAT, for example, if we consider the default um, configuration file. And uh, these are a little bit uh, uh, sensitive in the way that these three processor directives start with the hash with a pound sign, followed by exclamation and define. However, uh, pound sign is also used for the comments. So sometimes you think it's a comment or not, and maybe uh, by having a space between hash and exclamation hash bank, then uh, define is not enabled. Uh, another problem could be that you forgot to put an end if, and practically uh, if condition goes up to the end of the config file or until the next uh, block of if uh, defines. And if you're running container systems, sometimes uh, this define are provided as a command line uh, option with minus A. And you can use this to specify this is production, this is staging, testing. With this minus A, you can define this and socket and so on. Maybe uh, you forgot to provide such a uh, command line option at the uh, uh, start of Kamaelio. Commonly, it's running out of memory. For shared memory, you have the statistics with KMCLI stats, SHM. You will have to watch for um, free size. So as long as it's not there, it's in bytes, uh, you are uh, fine. This is good for long-term monitoring. If it's increasing and you don't uh, onboard new subscribers or you don't get uh, many uh, new calls, uh, then could be a leak. So you can eventually plan a restart, a schedule restart when you have a low volume of traffic and start the troubleshooting for memory. We have a wiki tutorial in our uh, website that you should look at it. If you have uh, more users, more uh, calls into your system, then you'll have to increase the size with minus 10 parameters. Then we have the private memory, which you get details per process because we'll have a private memory uh, zone for each process with another command, CMCLI, RPC, PKG stats. And from there on, you watch for each process how much available, um, so free size is there. If not, it's more or less like with shared memory, troubleshooting link to the wiki, or if you have uh, uh, good traffic, higher volume for good traffic, you have to increase the size with minus uppercase M. Going further into the Processing layer of uh, Camaelio transaction is something to watch for from a couple of perspectives. You can get the statistics for transaction with KMCLI stats TMX. Uh, look at um, active uh, transaction, in use transaction for um, uh, what's happening there. If you have too many, it could be maybe, is it a good traffic? Like we expect to have that. Uh, um, active uh, transaction or maybe someone penetrated you like a bad actor and if it's a good traffic then you'll have to uh, look for vertical or uh, horizontal scalability if it's not a good traffic then might be a bigger problem you'll have to add some security detect uh, scanning attacks i provided you here links to our tutorials because each of them have um, quite the uh, uh, like many variants to approach based on uh, typical use cases that are for you. Like maybe you are enterprise, maybe you are residential, and so on. Uh, looking at uh, how many users are active, again, uh, could be from the, the perspective of system getting uh, 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 slow, but if there are many good customers, that's a good problem to have at the end um, because many of the devices are behind the net when you have too many devices you may see the timer process over uh, loaded because it needs to send keep alive for net traversal 
Also, lookup could uh, be slower, so routing messages could be slower because you have a um, uh, uh, small size for the internal hash table. So, how you can solve it this? You can start user log module with its own um, timer processes. See this timer box parameter for user log, or increase if the lookup is slow, increase, increase the um, size of the internal hash table for it. And uh, also try to increase the children parameter, the global parameter, but not too high because it needs to stay in pair or double with the number of uh, CPU, CPU threads. So if you have too many children, then it could be a lot of context switching. And of course, at some point, you have to go for horizontal scaling. Uh, so adding load balancer, more servers to cope with the traffic, it's a solution for this one. And the last to deal with here would be active calls, which again, it's a, another good problem to have if it's about uh, good uh, um, uh, calls, good uh, users that uh, make these uh, sessions. And again, among the symptoms would be like slowing down of Camarillo because you may need to uh, increase the internal hash size as well as uh, the timer because you can enable uh, within dialog keep alive for uh, Kamaelio. So you have the hints here more or less uh, as with user log, with timer processes per module as well as uh, internal hash table plus horizontal scalability with the load balancer and distribution with DMT if you want to share the states uh, between uh, systems. I'm ending now just to say I use this command line for um, um, showing the statistics, but you can create your own statistics. So don't rely only on what uh, we export within the C code. You can add your own counters, your own metrics from the configuration file. So you can count uh, like invites per IP and so on overall and export them. Uh, you have the modules for creating these statistics, counters, statistics, or hash table could be also used as seeds like a container to accumulate information and make averages. And then you can export them to different um, a system like SNMP or StatsD, which together with Grafana can make nice charts, or Prometheus, or use a lower layer like just XML RPC or JSON RPC, or binary RPC commands via CTL, and you make your own uh, transport between Kamaelia and your monitoring tool. We will also have around our project uh, a web interface called Sirenis. It's another open source, somehow independent, uh, developed uh, at my company. Uh, you can enable their um, monitoring, so you have graphs. Of course, you need to update a bit the Camarillo config file, but you can get these nice charts and summaries like active calls uh, or active users, as well as summary of the last, the history, last uh, two, three days. I'm ending with uh, some links to um, presentation about scalability and the replication, because that would be the next step after you discover issues on the load with Kamaelia. So, uh, I'm not uh, going to describe each of them uh, that you discovered at uh, the past Camarillo World or KuCon as events. If you want to get a bit more familiar, I've been written a book together with a colleague. If you want to read, to check it, what's about, you have here the link. And uh, uh, to the end, I want to announce also our um, online event to happen just in a few weeks to celebrate also the start of the project, which happened on the 3rd of um, September 2001. So it's like 19th celebration of the project. Uh, if you want to join, follow the link for more details. So that's it uh, for uh, uh, my presentation today. And uh, I'm gonna be soon in the um, lounge for the questions. Thank you, Daniel. We appreciated you sharing that information with us. 
always uh, good to have you along and uh, a long time participant in things like uh, ClueCon, Astrocon, FOSDEM and those different uh, events. And thank you for, for everything you do, for a massive contribution, like you just said, started 19 years ago. Uh, amazing. Thank you for having me here and also thank you for organizing not only this edition, but all the past edition. I always enjoy ClueCon and Astrocon and all these world events around the world and you've been a major contributor from a community perspective, at least. Oh, the Clue Crew team love having you along. And somebody else they love having along, stick with us for a minute, Daniel, is Fred Posner. Let's get Fred in the room. How are you doing today, Fred? I'm doing great. Good to hear you guys. Yes, yeah, good to Fred. see you. And you, yeah, but the, the two of you are major uh, Kamat Ilio hat wearers, for one thing. Daniel doesn't have his on today. But I know he has one somewhere. I have a t-shirt. He doesn't have yeah. a t-shirt. Yeah, I've got a t-shirt. I fit in the hat a, better than the shirt. <laughs> a fine looking one. Oh well, um, Daniel, it, we're very, very grateful to have you uh, along. And uh, it, it's we're looking forward to you running over now to the broadcast cafe, where there will doubtless be a few people hanging out to get some Kama Ilio questions in. So uh, we'll say goodbye to you. Thank you very much and uh, we'll talk to Fred a little bit. Fred, I saw the title of your presentation was about protecting, uh, protecting free switch for, from practitioners of the dark arts. Yeah, I get into uh, during the presentation why the name was chosen, but uh, yes. <laughs> we're, we're looking forward to that. I've seen a, a good number of your Kama Ilio style presentations about security and, and edge stuff generally but i wanted to ask you this before you start off because i know at lod communications not only have you been involved in Kama ilio but you've got api ban as well is that going to be in your presentation today it will be at the end of the presentation we'll um, talk a little bit about a free service that we provide apm api ban that will help um, protect free switch uh ilio any of your next base platforms from unwanted zip attacks that's excellent. Okay. I just wanted to check that because if you'd have said no, I'd have asked you a few searching questions about it ahead of your presentation. But since you've said yes, we'll hold fire and look forward to you actually delivering that. Now, I think we can get your screen up, Fred, so we can see your slides. There they are. And so I'll, I'll hand over to you. Take it away, Fred. All right. Well, thank you. Um, today's talk is called Kama Ilio Free Switch and the Half-Blood Prince. And uh, before we get into the title, the first uh, question, of course, would be um, Kama what? And uh, there's two main ways that people pronounce this. Um, it would be Kama Ilio is uh, how you hear me and David go. And then a lot of times uh, Kamalio as well. Uh, it's a Hawaiian word um, and it means uh, to communicate. And so that is the name of the project, Kama Ilio. Originally open share and... Uh, you know, it's okay to have problems saying it. We don't, uh, the license doesn't cost any extra. <laughs> uh, so who am I? Um, my name is Fred Posner. I'm a voice over IP consultant uh, with uh, LOD and the Palmer Group. And to contact me, the best uh, way is through qxork.com. And then for any of you old phone geeks uh, listening and paying attention, uh, qxork are letters that uh hard letters so you don't have to go q as in quebec just uh so that's the genesis of that name uh the talk as has been uh described it's called the half-blood prince why well one it's an awesome movie two when i came up with the title i may have had a drink or seven um but then in thinking about it uh you may um you can take some parallels from that that movie and, and throw it into your real life. You know, you do need to uh, be ready for what life throws at you is really awesome. If you're deploying free switch in a production environment or, or comma ilio. And when you're troubleshooting um, any kind of telecommunications aspects, your first impressions may end up being very, very wrong. Um, so if you get nothing else from this presentation, I, I ask you to please, please, please keep an open mind. Um, and that's when troubleshooting, when designing, when deploying, when supporting, um, an open mind and a willingness to adapt will always benefit you. 
Um, so just like Bruce Lee, be like water, be willing to keep an open mind and you'll never go wrong. And with that, let's talk about um, our agenda. It's a quick talk. I'm going to give a very brief Camelio intro um, only because of a couple things. Uh, first would be that uh, Daniel just gave a, a talk on Kama Ilio, and there's uh, no better person to hear about Kama Ilio than from uh, Daniel. And secondly, there's a really good in-depth um, presentation from just two days ago at the Kama Ilio workshop, which is available online and through Klucon, about when you, um, you know, about all of the different aspects of what Kama Ilio is and how it can go there. So we'll do a brief intro and go for that. Uh, then, uh, you know, this is ClueCon, so we're going to talk about the benefits that Comilio can help with FreeSwitch. We'll go over some deployment examples, and uh, then we'll discuss um, uh, API band uh, very briefly, obviously. And with that, we're already six minutes in. Okay. Um, <laughs> so what is Comilio? So Comilio is a SIP proxy server. It's a SIP registrar server, SIP location. SIP application, SIP dispatcher, and even a SIP WebSocket. And you'll notice there's a lot of the word SIP. Comma Ilio, in it, you know, the too long didn't read is a SIP server. It's an open source SIP server that can handle proxying, registration, locations, applications, dispatching, WebSockets, and more. Sometimes it's easier to think about what isn't Comma Ilio. And Comma Ilio is not a SIP phone, it's not a media server. And it's not a back-to-back -back user agent, but hey, look at FreeSwitch. That does all three of those things. So when you combine the two together, you can have a very powerful solution. So why would I choose Kama Ilio? Um, you know, I'm already running FreeSwitch, and clearly it has a couple aspects that um, Kama Ilio doesn't, such as media handling and back-to-back -back user agents. So why would I deploy uh, Kama Ilio? Well, you, we could talk 30 to 40 minutes about why Kama Ilio is awesome. And um, I have these slides already posted on uh, my slide share, uh, but I gave a talk in 2017 at Kama Ilio World about why I love Kama Ilio. Uh, there's a link there, and uh, you can go into that, you know, and, and bore yourself to death. Um, but first of all, Kama Ilio is open source, um, so free as in beer, but very open source. Um, in terms of, you know, there's no company um, uh, with a financial interest behind it. It is just there um, for you in every aspect of what is open source. Has an extremely small footprint. So you don't need a lot of incredible hardware to run Kama Ilio. It's probably going to be one of your smallest needs in any of your deployment um, aspects. It's very fast. It's modular, so you can load whatever you need, and it plays well with others. So you can integrate Kama Ilio with a tremendous amount of things. The best way to think about Kama Ilio is almost as a, if it were an open source um, SBC. I don't want to get into the whole SBC, what isn't an SBC kind of function. So think of Kama Ilio as a SIP edge router. Some selected modules and features that I think really go well with um, FreeSwitch uh, would be HTable. Uh, HTable is probably by any measurable means my favorite module within Kama Ilio. It's been there since 2010, so happy 10th anniversary to HTable. It's a shared memory caching. So think of it as Redis, but within Kama Ilio. So no uh, connections to make, nothing else can be there. It's completely redundant because Kama Ilio has built inside of it a, a distributed message queue where it can share information with all other Kama Ilios. So think of it as an internal memory cache that is completely redundant. And it's a custom cache system. Another one is the Kama Ilio embedded language interface. Um, and that is Kemi. And this allows you to use other scripting languages to write your SIP routing. And Daniel talked about that, but, you know, Python, Lua, and if you're using FreeSwitch, you know that Lua is already awesome. So you can write your entire uh, present, your entire scripting for Kama Ilio and all your logic within Lua itself. 
uh, JavaScript, Ruby, Squirrels even s supported. So anything like that. So Kemi's been an amazing addition to Comet Ilio. We also have, as an addition uh, this year, it just came out, uh, Kafka. So we can send uh, information like Kafka would be great for CDRs. Just send, especially if you're running a globally distributed network, uh, you could uh, send information down the pipe to Kafka and have someone else pick it up and not worry about uh, holding up and going crazy with uh, different types of, you know, delays wherever they are. MQTT is another type of um, broker and publish and subscribe kind of communication aspect. And that's new this year, just came out in 2020. And also new this year is um, Stern Shaken implementation, completely open source. And um, that's it came out uh, earlier in the year where you could backport it, but it's built right into 5.4, which just came out last week. And very excited to um, see all that implementation into Comma Ilio. So how can we benefit FreeSwitch with Comma Ilio? Well, first of all, FreeSwitch can do a lot. Now, just because you can do a lot, sometimes it means that you're juggling way too much in the in the air, right? And so sometimes life is better when we can focus and offload the things that we really don't care about. So user registrations, authentication, uh, routing, least cost routing, CDRs, and security can all be offloaded to Comma Ilio. And if you think, if I were to take many of these aspects and just offload them into Comma Ilio, that gives FreeSwitch so much more ability to handle what it loves to do, media manipulation, everything like that, transcoding, all of the things that make FreeSwitch you know, what it is. You can offload things that are just kind of annoying at the same point. Yay, I'm keeping up user registrations, you know, every 30 seconds. FreeSwitch doesn't need to do that. Let Comma Ilio handle that. You know, whether it's uh, just totally offloading your user registrations or having Comma Ilio act as a mid registrar, let Comma Ilio offload some of your user traffic and let FreeSwitch just do what it does best. Those immediately uh, allow you to have some benefits such as scaling, enhanced security, redundancy, and the biggest issue here is performance gains. Okay, by taking away all these kind of authentications and over and over again, we can um, increase the performance by blocking traffic that should never ever hit free switch. Don't have to worry about denial of service attacks, things like that. We can really get some performance gains from free switch. So let's talk about some deployment examples. Okay, the easiest way is to just put Comma Ilio in between free switch and the internet, right? So as a basic proxy, Comma Ilio can act as your SIP edge router in this in this aspect. We're going to simply proxy to provide security. We'll provide um, user registrations in this aspect. We can do authentication, and we can do carrier load balancing, LCR, and failover. And it just Comma Ilio acts as the bouncer for to the free switch nightclub, right? So when we have let's say good traffic such as Harry Potter. If he wants to connect in, we're going to let all connections from Harry Potter come in. But when Voldemort comes in, we're just going to block it. Now, whether we're doing that just because um, we can identify Voldemort before he even says anything. So let's say looking at his um, SIP user agent or anything that we want, we can block from uh, bad traffic. So it could be blocking from IP, and that could be uh, geographical IP because we could do the geo IP routing. It could be based on user agent, could be based on SQL injection, whatever you want, we can block. And that's a fantastic way where, you know, instead of free switch running fail to ban and keeping up with all that, we can just have come Ilio just keep it from ever being a problem for free, from free switch. Come Ilio also has a great ability to do bridging. And this is something that is sometimes overlooked as, as a possible deployment um, help for free switch. But for example, if you really wanted to use uh, TLS, okay, multi-domain TLS, everything like that. But on free switch, you know, you don't want to deal with all the certificates. You don't want to deal with um, the extra TLS overhead and aspects like that. You can have Comma Ilio 
bridge TLS connections to UDP. You could also do that for SRTP. So you can have common ILIO at the end edge of your network so that anything to your internal network is SRTP to the outside. And then anything within the internal network is just, you know, regular RTP. So common ILIO can be that SRP to RTP bridge uh, through the use of RTP engine. And then, um, you know, it could be a bridge of TLS and uh, UDP as well. Um, in those same kind of senses, it can also be a WebRTC to SIP bridge, and it could be IPv6 to IPv4 um, a bridge. So if you just want to have free switch just handle with IPv4 traffic, and that's great. Comma Ilio can handle both IPv IPv4 and IPv6, and just limit your free switch interfaces uh, to help you in the best possible way whatsoever. So that is, um, you know, your most common type of deployment is just a simple common ILIO in front of your existing free switch. Uh, we can also start to enhance aspects. Um, Lorenzo Miniero gave an amazing uh, talk on Janus in a workshop uh, earlier, both today and the other day. Uh, common ILIO integrates with Janus uh, really well, as well as free switch, but you could also have um, Janus connect to Comma Ilio. So you could say, okay, well, let me send uh, WebRTC to Janus. Um, and then Janus can either talk to Comma Ilio and WebRTC or, uh, you know, through WebSockets or through SIP. And then Comma Ilio can handle it accordingly to whatever uh, free switch that you'd want it, as well as um, perhaps to an outside carrier. So have, um, you know, bypassing free switch whenever it's needed and then have Comma Ilio decide what carrier to send it out to. Uh, whether that's a least cost routing or, um, you know, failover capacity, whatever you, you would want in that aspect. When it gets really fun is when you have multiple free switches. So with multiple free switches, you can have just one comma ilio. So comma ilio can use a module in there called dispatcher, which would automatically choose the best uh, free switch. You could also accomplish this through that H table module that I said for simple failover. But Comma Ilio will monitor uh, the status of each of the boxes and then, you know, send traffic either, you know, based on any type of algorithm. We support so many, it's hard to keep up with, but it could be weight distribution. It could be uh, from purpose. It could be by domain so that you're sending all clients of one specific tenant to a specific uh, free switch and they have that automatically be chosen. However you see fit, when one goes down, Comma Ilio absolutely knows about it and then you know sends traffic to the other ones instead of the one that's down and then when of course when they go back up it automatically sends uh traffic to uh to all the free switches so you could dynamically add them and take them down especially fun when you're doing docker deployment or things like that now when you start talking about DMQ, which I was mentioning in the beginning with the distributed messaging queue that Comma Ilio has built into it, this becomes really fun when you start doing multiple deployments with lots of free switches. So I could have an East Coast deployment, a West Coast deployment, or maybe a European node, an American node, a node in Asia, however you want to do it. Comma Ilio can sync immediately through each other and use whatever free switch it needs. So, you know, when a call comes into Comma Ilio, but it knows that that call is on the, the West Coast, it could either use that free switch or, or bridge them in however you want. If one data center went down completely, it could route to the proper um, state within the West. If you're having an even deployment because Comma Ilios can sync up, you still have valid CDRs, you know okay, this client isn't taking advantage of um, too many calls or whatever kind of business logic you're doing on anything. Um, so you have geographical redundancy as well as business logic that can uh, handle uh, whatever you need, even though it's a global deployment. And that's where Comma Ilio incredibly helps you and it just shines. Um, so your main benefits again are scaling because of the H table module, dispatcher module using Redis. Um, you know, if you didn't want to use the internal H table, we do integrate with Redis, Kafka. You can use APIs however you'd want. Um, and our distributed messaging queue really helps you scale as needed. Um, and when I talked about having a small footprint 
on systems with just four gigs of memory, Kama Ilio can handle, you know, well over 300,000 users. So when I talk about offloading your user base to FreeSwitch, yes, FreeSwitch can handle a ton, but think about how much more it can handle when you're not having to handle 300,000 registrations or things like that. Um, and as a load balancer in stateless mode, Kama Ilio can handle, you know, thousands of call setups per second. So, you know, it's extremely fast, extremely powerful, very small footprint. Um, for security, through our permissions module, the Pike module, um, you know, we have GOIP if you wanted to block certain regions. Um, because of how we can inspect just SIP packets, you can block by user agent, you can block by calls per second for IP, you can block by SQL injection, or block by anything that you need. If you have certain destinations that you just want to start blocking, and then you could decide to block just certain users, you could block entire IPs, entire IP ranges, anything you want, you could just block, and those blocks will just, you know, just be dropped. No big CPU um, allocation. It's just uh, phenomenal. Now, speaking of blocking traffic, and it looks like I have uh, just about. Um, 10 minutes left, which is great because I wanted to leave some time for questions. The last thing I wanted to bring up is something called API ban. And that is a project that we did here at LOD. And basically, uh, you know, throughout all the talkings of past ClueCons and uh, especially at Kama Ilio World, we've always been discussing, okay, well, you know, I'm getting hit by this DOS attack or I'm getting hit by, by this guy making fraudulent calls. Wouldn't it be great if we could share some of that information? And that's what API band is. API band is a global network of honeypots. And uh, these, um, these honeypots come and collect known, um, uh, known bad actors. And then those bad actors are then sent to uh, the API where it can pull and automatically block. So we have an integration with Kama Ilio where let's say every two minutes, it just pulls any new IPs and then, uh, and it does it um, incrementally. So it's not always just constantly pulling tons of IPs and uh, it will automatically just drop the traffic from a hits you. So you're preventing, you think of it as a, as a preemptive fail to ban. Um, now, if you're not running Kama Ilio, but you're running, let's say free switch or, you know, fusion or something like that, as long as it's uh, Linux based and has IP tables, um, we have a go client that will integrate the same thing with IP tables. So we'll automatically block those IPs uh, within IP tables. And then that way free switch doesn't have to use any processor or anything like that to, to kill your calls. And uh, it just protects you. There's uh, been, really good support and uh, feedback from the community on it. It's our way of giving back. There's no charge to it. It's free to use. It's at apiband.org. And uh, it's always being updated. We're looking at making a community trust model as well. Right now it's all known honeypots that we can control so that we can make sure that, you know, we're not um, blocking good traffic. And if you really want to know more about API ban, I did a interview with our own David Duffett on um, one of the ClueCom weeklies. And, uh, you know, if you just can't get enough of my beautiful face as well as David's, I'd love for you to watch that. Uh, it's available on the Free Switch channel on YouTube. And with that, I have a few minutes left for questions. If there are any, I'm not sure if there are. Otherwise, I'll be in the room uh, after here. And um, I just want to thank you for allowing me to talk at ClueCon again. I've always had uh, a lot of fun at ClueCon. I miss seeing everyone in, per in person. The open source community is um, a very important part of my life. And it's uh, something that I, I just truly uh, love every one of you and uh, enjoy spending time with you. To learn more about Kama Ilio, please go to kamailio.org. And if you need to reach out and uh, have any questions to me outside of uh, ClueCon, then reach me at qxork.com. Thank That's you. Great. Thank you so much, Fred. It's good of you to come in. Uh, I just checked on the chat 
and I, I couldn't find any questions immediately there. Um, but if you can find your way to the broadcast cafe after this session, uh, there people can uh, talk to you face to face. You get to see face to face, and they will share their love for you in that room, for, <laughs> in, in, in a family friendly way. Um, now, um, I was just thinking actually, we should have you back onto Clucon Weekly because when we did the talk before, it was kind of the early stages of API ban. It's been out there a bit now and uh, your your usage has increased. And by the way, I'd like to give a, a personal testimonial that I installed the Go client the other day and was pleasantly surprised to find it was within my capabilities and it all worked very, very smoothly. And uh, there it is, building up my IP tables, keeping the bad guys out of my SIP services. Yeah, I did a, um, a demo with you at IT Expo, um, dangerous demo, and you could install and start blocking in under three minutes. So the time that you could do a dangerous demo, you can install uh, API. That's right. You can get API band up and running that quick. Okay, Fred, we'll let you go into the broadcast cafe uh, and uh, might see you there during the break as well because we're heading for a break. Uh, but now we're going to wave bye-bye to you and get Abby in the room. Take care, Fred. Thank you very much for a great presentation. Top class as usual. And uh, the old one too. It's not often you get both Daniel Constantin Merler and Fred just that close together. So we're, we're very, very blessed for that Kama Ilio hour. Abby, I know, I just know people have been waiting for you to show up because you're going to give something away. It's, it's not just that. Of course, they love seeing you as well. But, it's, but they are excited about things being given away. So let me hand over to you. Oh, yes. All right. So I'm about to give something away. We're going to be giving away a ClueCon hat. I have a name picked from all of our attendees. All of you uh, who have been attending ClueCon Deconstructed have automatically been added to this list. So if you're watching this live right now, yes, you could possibly win. Uh, I just wanted to announce that as soon we have this raffle and then we have one more round of speakers and then I'm going to be giving away our uh, engraved MacBook Pro. Ooh, so keep your ears tuned for that. Woo! We're so excited to be giving that away. But first, we have a ClueCon hat, which is slightly less exciting, but still incredibly exciting. So still worth having, Abby. <laughs> Oh, yes. I, I I think I might at the swag store. If you haven't heard, we have a swag store. I think I might go get myself a, a ClueCon hat. I got my eyes set on a free switch hoodie as well. <laughs> so let's see. Our winner for the ClueCon hat is, drum roll, doo -doo 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 -doo, is Thomas Ferre. Or Thomas Fair? Thomas Ferre. Uh, you are officially the winner of a ClueCon hat, and we're going to be sending you an email so that you can claim your prize. So congratulations to Thomas, everybody. Well done, then, Thomas. That's great. Yeah, good job. Course, I like Fred, to do a Fred, our speaker just now was a winner, just uh, in uh, just a while ago, wasn't he? When he won the, Oh, yes. The, Fred Posner was the, the winner hoodie. of our last raffle. And That's I pinky great. swear it's all random. So... <laughs> Just as you were talking about our wonderful swag store, it occurred to me that when you go to a museum or something like that, you exit via the gift shop, don't you? And I wonder <laughs> if we could work out to exit via the swag store from Clue. Oh, yes. Store. If you want to leave ClueCon, you must exit through the swag store. <laughs> a little, little bit of fun. Well, thank you very much, Abby. I just want to tell everybody about what we've got coming next because we're going into a break, but we're going to be back in half an hour's time for our last two speakers, and we're ending on a bang with two great speakers. We've got Jerry Eisner from the world of E911. So really looking forward to that talk. And again, a previous ClueCon Weekly uh, interviewee. And uh, I found that Jerry's got a great wealth of knowledge from that realm. And then our own Piotr Gregor to talk about Stir and Shaken, the, the signal wire gift to the community in that wonderful library to end the... the uh, the, the reign of those nasty robo callers. So plenty to look forward to, but Abby and I are gonna say bye-bye now and we'll see you in half an hour's time. Remember to go along to the broadcast cafe to see the previous two speakers. Bye-bye. <laughs>